Hey guys, Brandon here from Life's Secret Sauce, where we teach young, motivated professionals how to fast track their career using the skills that we should have learned in school, like effective communication, storytelling, and body language, rather than learning things like Latin, because the dead language hasn't come in very useful to me, unless you're talking about the scientific name for a llama, which just happens to be Llama Glama. Don't believe me? Go check it out. Kind of fun. But I'm not here to talk about dead languages. I am here to talk about how to tell an engaging story, how to keep people's attention. Now, this is what it's all about. We retain information better through stories. We learn through stories. We've been told them since we were young. Facts and figures are great, but they belong in a spreadsheet, not in your sales pitch, not in your ideas. We can't visualize and connect to numbers in the same way that we understand stories. So if you really want to convince someone, if you want to persuade someone, if you're trying to sell someone, start telling stories. So today I'm going to tell you the three must-have elements of any great story. Now, I didn't make these up. These, have been, these are facts. They have been around for years since cavemen have told stories. There are tons of amazing books on how to tell better stories, and my guess is that you probably haven't read many or any of them, but these are the facts. These are the cliff notes, the three things that you need to know about how to tell an engaging story. Number one, your story has to have vulnerability. Number two, it needs to have conflict or struggle. And then number three, it needs to wrap up with a transformation. Now, obviously there's a lot more that needs to go into the context of the story and your setup and whatnot, but when you're talking about crafting your story, these are the three elements that need to be included. So let's break them down. Number one, vulnerability. You probably hate it. You probably don't wanna show your tender side. You don't wanna put yourself out there for others to judge or criticize, but the story that you don't want to tell is probably the story that you should be telling. If you have the confidence to know that you're amazing, then telling a story that shows your vulnerability, your softer side, allows people to approach you. It makes you open, it, it brings, it draws people into you. So the story that you don't wanna tell, like I said, is probably the one that you should be telling. Think about this for a second. Famous woman, we all know, she was born to teenage parents in the poor part of Mississippi in the 1950s. Ended up being raised by her grandmother. She was raped multiple times from the ages of nine to 14. She used drugs and alcohol to cope with deep depression. And she eventually turned her life around to become one of the most inspirational, powerful, and richest women on the planet. Guess who? You probably know the story. This is Oprah. Now, do you think it was easy for Oprah to tell this story of her awful upbringing to the world? The entire world has heard this story. No. But what does it do? It, it takes her out of this realm of the total upper echelon and it makes her relatable. It makes people believe in her story and in, in her trials and tribulations. And it motivates others to know that they can make it through, that there's a light on the end of the tunnel. So maybe your story isn't that traumatic. I, I hope it's not, but I'm sure that there's something, some underlying vulnerability that you can dig into that finds your relatability to others. And in a weird, crazy way, we relate to others who have been through the same terrible things that we've been through. So maybe it's a divorce, maybe you've battled drugs and alcohol, whatever it is, but don't be afraid of your vulnerability. It just may be what's missing from your story. Number two, conflict and struggle. Baby was born, got good grades, went to college, got a job, had kids, saved a retirement, moved to Florida, died. Great story. Not. Where's the conflict? Where's the pain point? If you've ever done any literary or narrative research, there are actually six types of conflicts. So find one, pick one, and then start implementing into your story. So what are these six types of conflicts? Number one, people versus people, obviously. Think. Hunger Games, Katniss Everdeen, shooting, bowing it up with people. Number two, person versus nature. Jaws, well, I mean, what, what's more fear inducing than watching a 20 foot animatronic shark eat you? Or maybe it's into the wild. A man goes up into upper Alaska, man versus nature, what happens? Nature wins. Number three, person versus self. This is your battles with yourself, self-sabotage, struggles with fear, addiction, confidence. Fight Club, anyone? Number four, person versus society. This is your man on a mission. You're righting the world's wrongs. Think To Kill a Mockingbird. Atticus Finch was 
defending a black man in the 1930s in the South. Yeah, he upset a couple of people. There was definite conflict there. Number five types of comp for types of conflict, person versus the supernatural. Now, probably not going to be in your story unless you're secretly a Jedi or were recently bitten by a werewolf, but everyone is intrigued by the supernatural. Why do you think the Avengers has sold billions and billions of ticket sales around the world? Well, there's lots of struggle, there's lots of conflict, and of course, there's quite a bit of supernatural as well. And then six, the final type of struggle, people versus technology. Now, this is today. I could tell you a million and a half stories about how I personally battle with tech. Shoot, I'm lucky that this video even made it onto YouTube and I figured out how to get it on there without deleting it. I couldn't tell you how many videos that I have accidentally deleted or filmed the whole thing and the microphone was off or got it ready to upload and then something terrible happened. Me? Tech? Mm, not so much. I'm good with people. But, forget about that, we're talking about stories like The Matrix, The Terminator, in which tech collides with real life and there's actual conflict. So, pick one of the six. Those, it's not just those six, those are the six main ones, but figure out how conflict applies to your story. And start adding some element of surprise, of suspense, of action, of conflict. Otherwise, your story is just plain boring. And the third and final, which is last but not least, the third element that needs to be incorporated into your stories is transformation. So maybe you had a rough upbringing or you hiked the Appalachian Trail and battled nature. What happened at the end? Are you smarter, stronger, more powerful, more influential? What happened? What was the result? How did you change? How did you grow? How did you transform? In storytelling, you've probably heard of the hero's journey. I don't have enough time to talk about it here. Just Google it and then overlay that framework onto any Disney movie in history. It's the same. But anyway, you've got to remember, your story has to come full circle. The resurrection, the atonement, the rebirth. What was your transformation? Remember, telling a story is so much more than facts and figures. It's more than the who, what, when, where, why. It's, that's your outline. That's great. It's a good place to start but you've got to add some suspense, add some conflict, and stop. Please stop telling boring stories. So that's all for today. I could talk about storytelling forever and ever. I, I love to engage with people and, and see that their attention is wrapped into it. And I really hope you got a lot of value out of today's video. If you did, click subscribe right down there in the corner. It's a way you can say thank you to us. And check out the link below. We've put together an awesome guide to how to create your own story portfolio. There's some video in there as well. And you can check out our blog to get even more remarkable content to start fast tracking your life and unlocking your inner awesome. So until next time, ciao for now.